Hello everyone. I'm sorry I'm not able to join you for this year's SOTA Summit. I would love to be there, but I am a part of the official congressional delegation representing the United States in Normandy for the 70th anniversary of D-Day. First, let me acknowledge and thank Michael, Jim, Margo, and everyone at the Center for Science and the Public Interest for inviting me to say a few words. And thank you for all of your hard work for over 40 years in promoting crucial issues like health, nutrition, food safety, and sound science. I also want to recognize Marlene, Roberta, and Carol at Yale's Rudd Center for Food Policy and Obesity, and Harold Goldstein of California Center for Public Health Advocacy, all of whom have provided invaluable research and counsel as I work to develop federal legislation that responds meaningfully to the obesity and diabetes epidemics afflicting our country. Two years ago, I was proud to keynote the SOTA Summit and to receive the Life's Swedish Champion from you. Since then, I have been continuing my efforts to see that we are doing all we can to combat obesity and diabetes and to promote health and well-being. The powerful new documentary, Fed Up, which I encourage all of you to see, puts this fight in stark context. It demonstrates beyond a shadow of a doubt one of the biggest culprits of today's obesity and diabetes crises. Our food is being overloaded with added sugar. The American Heart Association recommends that women consume no more than six teaspoons of sugar a day, and men no more than nine teaspoons a day. That is less than what is in one 20-ounce soda. In fact, the average American is consuming 23 teaspoons of sugar per day, two and a half to four times more than the recommended amount. This means not just obesity and diabetes, but also high blood pressure, heart disease, gout, countless other health issues. Added sugar is pervasive and almost inescapable at the supermarket. And of course, many times it is the sugary foods and drinks that are the easiest for families living on the edge of poverty to afford. When a two-liter cola is 99 cents and blueberries are over $3, something has gone very wrong. As Fed Up shows, this is not just the free market at work. All too often, sugary foods or drinks with high fructose corn syrup are cheaper as a direct result of government policies. It is long past time that we pass and support policies that work toward better health instead. With that in mind, I am working on legislation right now to tax sugar-sweetened drinks like sodas in a way that reflects the serious damage they are doing to our health. I hope to introduce legislation in a matter of weeks, and I look forward to working with all of you to make this bill a reality. Thank you for continuing to encourage health-promoting policies at all levels of government, and I hope to see you soon.